To start, remove the front wheel from the vehicle. Next, you will detach the sway bar end link from the strut body by removing the single nut. The end link will then be moved aside. Remove the single bolt and nut that holds the lower portion of the strut to the hub of the vehicle. To free the strut from the hub, you will need to use the Raceline strut spreader tool to spread the hub enough for the shock to come loose. Insert the tool into the spacing into the hub and twist to spread the hub apart. To gain access to the upper strut mount hardware, you will need to remove the trim at the bottom of the windshield. To start, you will need to remove the windshield wiper arms. Once the plastic cap is removed, remove the nut holding the arm to the motor. Press down on the joint of the wiper several times to loosen the wiper from the motor. Now, remove the rubber trim by pulling towards the front of the vehicle. The plastic trim will be removed next. This piece clips into the bottom portion of the windshield and can be removed by pulling upwards away from the windshield. On this specific platform, there will not be enough droop to the suspension to remove the strut without detaching one side of the axle. To do so, you will remove the large bolt in the center of the hub. Once the axle is detached, you will have enough room to lower the hub and pull the strut from the vehicle. Using spring compressors, unbolt the top nut from the strut to free the OEM top mount. You will now install the OEM top mount onto the Raceline coilover. Place the mount onto the spring and tighten the included nut to secure the mount to the coilover. Since the coilover is much shorter than the OEM suspension, you can reinstall the axle before the coilover is installed. Align the axle spline into the hub and tighten the bolt to pull the axle into the hub. Place the coilover into the wheel well and align the mount into the shock tower. Reinstall the three bolts that hold the top mount to the tower. You can now install the trim to the bottom of the windshield. Align the ends and press down firmly and click the plastic trim into place. Install the rubber trim by pressing the opening onto the seam of the body. Reinstall the windshield wipers by aligning the wipers into the correct position, sliding the ends onto the motor, and tightening the nut securely. Back in the wheel well, slide the hub onto the coilover, ensuring that it is seated completely, and tighten the nut and bolt. Move the sway bar end link into place onto the coilover bracket and tighten the nut to secure the link to the bracket. You can now reinstall the front wheel and the installation for this corner is complete. To begin the rear, remove the rim from the vehicle. Next, you will remove the bolt and nut holding the lower control arm to the rear hub. Keep in mind that the spring will now be unloaded, so take caution in lowering the control arm. You will now be able to pull down on the lower control arm and remove the rear spring. Once the spring is removed, you can access and remove the bolt holding the lower shock bushing to the rear hub. The rear fender liner will need to be removed in order to access the rear upper mount. To remove this liner, you will have several torque screws that need to be removed and the liner can be easily pulled from the wheel well. Once removed, you will now have access to the two bolts holding the top of the shock to the vehicle. Remove these bolts and the shock will be free to pull out from the wheel well. The OEM upper strut mount will be used with the Raceline shock. Remove the top nut from the shock to free the mount. Once removed, you will pull off the dust cover and bump stop to remove from the mount as these pieces will not be reused. Place the mount onto the Raceline shock and tighten the supplied nut to secure the two together.
The shock can now be realigned into the wheel well and the two bolts holding the mount to the body can be reinstalled. Position the fender liner back into the wheel well and secure with the torque screws. The lower shock bushing will now be bolted to the rear hub prior to the rear spring's installation. Once the shock is bolted to the hub, you can position the rear spring and perch into place on the lower control arm. We opt to install the perch against the body rather than in the control arm for ease of adjusting once completely installed. The rubber insulator pad in the lower control arm will be reused, but the rubber insulator that sits against the body will not be used with the perch. Once the spring is in place, raise the control arm to its position on the hub and reinstall and tighten the nut end bolt. The rear wheel can be reinstalled as this corner's installation is complete.